Good morning and welcome to the service with the difference. It is the 29th of March 2024. It is Good Friday and it's the day that we we celebrate our freedom. We celebrate how Christ has given himself completely so that we are able to enter into the fullness of the joy and the beauty and the wonder of, of the presence of God. Um, Today we are reading from Mark chapter 15. We're going to read from verse 25 to verse 47. It is the story of Jesus as he is placed on the cross. Um, he dies on the cross. He is taken off the cross and, and laid in the tomb. The fuller reading for that um, and really recommend that you read it. It's from John chapter 18 from verse 1 all the way through to 19 verse 42. From the moment Jesus enters into the garden of Gethsemane, starts praying, begins there all the way through. To him being laid in in the tomb. And then we're also going to be reading from Psalm 22, where the psalmist is writing of how they have been rejected by by everyone, even their friends have rejected them, and and they are in this place of deep deep despair. But they 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 know that God is going to lead them out of this place of of despair. And then we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 52. We're going to read from chapter 52, verse verse 13, all the way through to chapter 53, verse 12. Um, and and this reading speaks of the suffering of of the servant, the servant of the Lord. Um, we have looked throughout this holy week at 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 the servant of the Lord um, from Isaiah's readings. Just every night, it's been um, one of the Isaiah readings of the servant of the Lord. Today again, we look at the servant of the Lord, and today the reading speaks especially um, of the suffering of the servant of the Lord, as well as the glory of the servant of the Lord. And then we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to read from verse 16 through to verse 25. The writer speaks of how we are able to enter into the most holy place, into, into the presence of God because of the blood of Christ. Christ has made a new covenant with us. Christ has opened the way for us to be able to enter into, into the presence of God. So again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them and we pray that he bless them to us as we reflect on them on, on this Good Friday. Throughout the season of Lent, as, as well as now, now Holy Week, we have been journeying through how letting go of everything that is not God, embracing everything that is God, is, is similar to the process of rehabilitation. Um, letting go of sin, letting go of everything that is not love in order to embrace everything that is love, is the same process we need to go through of letting go of an addiction we have to a substance or to a behavior um, or even to, to an attitude. But we will also know that all rehabilitation programs are, are not equal. You know, some are, some are going to work in some contexts, but they'll fail dismally in, in other contexts. Um, and there are many factors that play a role. The support of the community, the effectiveness of the program for the individual, the, the addiction history of the individual, the, the extent of the damage that has been done, the type of addiction itself, all of these things play a role in, in what type of program the person needs to attend and, and where they need to attend it, obviously, because even the personalities of those who are running the programs play a role in whether this program is going to work for, for this person. In fact, the more factors that influence the addiction, the more places the program has to fail. And and the only sure program of rehabilitation, the only sure program of renewal, the only the only sure program of restoration is, is found in Christ. Because, because Christ is the only one who cannot be defeated by any power anywhere. The healing love of God is the only program to effectively deal with every facet of our rehabilitation. Because while it is generally effective, it is it is also personally tailored. Um, you know, Good Friday is the evidence we have of how Christ will, will enter into every single darkness in order to not only bring his light in, but in order to, to bring his people out. There is, there is nowhere you can be um, when, when you are lost that, that Christ cannot fetch you out. There is nowhere you can be where you are hidden from the power of, of Christ's love. And, and Good Friday is called good because of the work of salvation that was that was wrought in the sacrifice of Christ on, on behalf of humanity, on behalf of creation. It is good because it reminds us of the reality of death, but also the reality of the resurrection that we're going to be celebrating on, on Sunday. You cannot you cannot separate the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. They are, they are one event. Jesus dies. 
he 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 goes into into the gates of hell, opens up the gates of hell, and draws his his people out. He he is raised from the dead, and 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 we know that death is real, but we also know now that that death has no power over us because Christ has broken its hold over us. It's it's Good Friday because of the complete way in which God has expressed His love for creation, for the way in which He would go to all lengths to restore creation to Himself. And, and even though we know it is good, we are still left faced with the reality of our sin. We, we, are, we, are, we are faced with the reality of our imperfection, the reality of who we are in God and the reality of who we are not in God. It is on Good Friday that we are convicted that we, we don't have to run from who we are as we as we look into the mirror of, of Christ's death on the cross. And, and I say it's a mirror because as we look into the cross, we see reflected back at us how much God loves us. We, we see reflected back at us how much how much that love costs God. And we and we see how much that love is is reflected in, in our own love. And so and so it's on Good Friday that we know we we are able to come into into God's presence with all that we have because Christ has has entered even even into the gates of hell and 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 whatever darkness there is inside of us Christ has entered into into a darkness much darker than that and he has brought his light out of that darkness and so how much more will he be able to bring his light out of even our darkness and so on good friday we we celebrate our our own rehabilitation because we we look at Jesus and we recognize in Jesus the one who cannot be defeated. The love of God cannot be overcome. You know, the love that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has for the world is a love that, that sees beyond itself into the needs of, of his creation. Not, not to pamper the wants of the creation, but to draw love out from that creation, to, to teach creation how to love as God loves. And, it, and it's because of the fallen character of the world that, that God's love made known in Christ has, has, has come to set it right. You know, when, when we are called to show forgiveness and we don't, when we, when we get angry and when we get impatient, precisely when we should be showing kindness and, and self-control, when we, when we become passive, when we should be active, that's when we remember Christ's words. I, I didn't come for the healthy. I came, I came for the sick. Christ has come precisely because we are, we are broken. You know, in the same way that a teacher teaches because the students don't know and, and they need to learn. So, so Christ comes to bring life because, because God's people don't know how to live the life that he has given to them. And so we, we see on Good Friday ex exactly why Christ needs to come. It's, it's one violation after the other in the, in the name of God. One, one piece of evidence after the other of why God needed to step into history in, in order to forge a new way forward for, for his children. You know, the disciples, they, they are violating their own convictions that Jesus is the Christ. They are violating their own conviction, their promise that, that they would stand by him come hell or high water because, because hell came and the disciples ran. And, and this is the reason that God's love was willing to enter the gates of hell. This is the reason God's love was willing to open up the gates of hell from the inside so that all who were captured behind those gates would be set free. The religious leaders, they, they violated the laws that they tried so hard to protect, that they tried so hard to, to promote, because, because it turns out in the end that they were more concerned about their comfort than, than the sacred law of God. And, the, and this is exactly why Christ came, to fulfill the law and the prophets. There could be no greater interpretation of the law. There could be no greater interpretation of the prophets than Christ's life and his death. Pilate violated his, his own conscience, um, but Pilate's conscience was, was for sale to the highest bidder anyway. He valued his hide more than he valued his, his principles. The Roman centurion at the cross, he betrayed his own opinion in, in the face of a, a dubious order from a dubious commander. And, and this is exactly the reason Christ was willing to die in order to, to save us, to, to save us from, from ourselves, to save us from being our own worst enemies. The love of God is the only instrument that could be used to defeat a world that is devoid of love because the love of God is greater than anything in, in all of creation. The love of God called all of creation into being. And so don't reject the only thing that can bring renewal. Don't, don't reject the only thing that can bring restoration. Don't, don't reject the only thing that can help you embrace all that is of God and help you let go of all that is not of God. 
we were never created to to simply survive. We were never created to to limp from birth to death, hoping that that nothing terrible is going to happen somewhere in between those two points of our lives. Um, maybe even wishing that something good would happen between those two points of our lives. We see in the life of Christ that we we weren't born to survive. We we were born to live fully. You know, when we when we act in love, then then we are living. But when we sacrifice love in in order to survive, then then there is no life. There is no lasting joy. When I, when I choose to save myself, when I choose to to protect my own interests at at the at the expense of acts of compassion and and at the expense of acts of justice, then then I'm not yet alive. Then I, then I haven't started to live my life. My life is empty. And so Christ wasn't willing to love. He wasn't willing to to live any less fully than than he could, even even if it meant death. You know, he he didn't come to die. He came to he came to live, even even in death. He he came to bring life. And so on the on the way to the cross, Christ Christ faces this this darkness. He he faces his fears, and he and he continues to walk because because he knew that he was bringing his light into the darkness. And if he turned away at this point, the light would never ever enter into the darkness. Christ's invitation for for us is is to love as He loves, with a with a love that is that is not willing to be anything less than it can be. And the invitation is for us to live as as He lived, with a with a life that is that is not willing to settle for anything less than the life God created us to be a part of. But in order to do that, we we need to face our own darkness. And and personally, I I have an issue with the darkness. I have I have an issue with with a feeling that there is somebody behind my back in the dark. And that's why if I hear you coming down a dark passage and I'm in the passage, I'm compelled to give you a fight because if you laugh or if you swear or if you shout, there there is a noise. And then with there being a noise, then I'm no longer afraid of the darkness. I don't have to think about the darkness anymore. And 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 this is this is as true a physical darkness as it is of. The dark places that I don't, I don't want to go into um, within myself. Christ brings a stillness, and and in that stillness that that brings peace. We we are faced with our darkness. We are faced with our sin, our guilt, our desolation. We are we are faced with everything within us that is that is not not of God. We are faced with with everything that we have get, given control of our lives over to um, that is not God. Because all of that stuff separates us from God. All of that stuff gets in the way of our relationship with God. But but in Christ, our darkness doesn't seem that dark because we know that we know that Christ didn't come to bring death. He came to bring life and he came to, to bring life eternal. And so I can face my darkness because Christ faces it with me and he, and he brings light out of my darkness. And, and, and I just need to keep on reminding my darkness that, that I have the light of the world with me and it is, it is he who, who justifies me. And so because I can be honest about my own fear, because I can be honest about my own shortcomings in the presence of Christ, I have more patience with yours. And I, and I, and I no longer have this overwhelming need to protect myself at, at your expense. And so, and so this frees me to love you for who you are. This, this frees me to teach you how to be loved. This, this frees me to allow you to teach me how to be loved. And so on Good Friday, we... I guess, I guess we have to ask the question, does, does Christ's sacrifice make a difference to the world? And, and I guess the answer is it does, if it makes a difference to us. Does Christ's sacrifice bring an end to corruption in government? Does it bring an end to um, corruption in, in the business world? It does, when it brings an end to it in, in us. Does Christ's sacrifice bring an end to to rape, to, to violence, to, to domestic violence, to abandoned families. And, and I guess it does when we no longer allow it to be a part of our lives and, and our homes and, and our society. We choose. We choose what the norm will be and we choose what is acceptable or not in the society that surrounds us. Christ submitted himself to violence. He submitted himself to abuse. He submitted himself to death because he wasn't willing to compromise on life. He came to bring life. He came to end injustice. He came to show mercy. He came to offer forgiveness. He came to offer freedom. And he, and he came to teach us how to embrace life. And it, and it might make no sense according to our minds, but Christ assures us that, that this is what real life is all about. He came to bring radical living and he came to teach radical love. Will you receive the gift of Christ's love, which is greater than any darkness, 
than you can ever face. Will you receive the gift of Christ's sacrifice for yourself today? Even if you don't understand it, even if it doesn't make sense to you at this moment, will you open your hands and your heart and your mind to Christ and allow Christ to do his work of renewal, of redemption, of restoration, of rehabilitation in you as you submit to him and allow him to bring his light into your darkness. Let's pray. And so, Lord God, we we have no idea how great your love is. For many of us, it's it's not much more than an abstract concept or something that needs to be discussed. You know, we ask, Lord God, that that you would convict us of of how great and how deep and how wide and how full your love is. Lord, help us to put our darkness and your love side by side to see the comparison because because we want to trust you, Lord God, but but we're not always sure. We are afraid to open our hearts because we're afraid we're never, ever going to be able to contain all that comes out of it. And so, Lord God, please convict us that your love is greater than us and convict us that your life is greater than our death. Convict us that we will never be overcome when we rest our lives in you because nothing, nothing can overcome your love. We pray this, Lord Jesus, in your precious name. Amen.